Hello and today I want to answer a question you guys ask me all the time, particularly you photo video editors. What should you be buying right now? Should you be buying a QNAP Thunderbolt NAS or a Synology 10GBE NAS solution? Let's go. Okay, so there's no denying it, content is getting bigger, editing getting harder, and moving all the way around the world and accessing your files over the network or the internet is bloody appealing. And so many of you photo video editors out there are looking for a way to have a large storage array of data that multiple people can access at once and edit from, as well as utilize it for distribution and sharing your content across the network and the internet, thereby simplifying your workflow. But so many of you um, photo video editor, uh, photo video editors use Synology NAS products. You use these products because it's very synonymous with Mac and being incredibly user friendly. However, Synology is still yet to adopt Thunderbolt connectivity on their NAS platforms. And to be perfectly honest, it's looking more and more like they will never go down that road. So, so many of you have been considering the QNAP brand because they've got um, Thunderbolt 3 and 2 enabled NAS devices. But it comes at an extra price on the face of things. So ultimately, what should you be buying? A QNAP Thunderbolt NAS or a Synology NAS that arrives with 10GBE connectivity or upgrade it afterwards. Today, I'm gonna to talk about these regions. I'm gonna talk about the cost comparison, the ease comparison, support comparison, and finally, performance, to give you some idea about the highs and lows of Thunderbolt NAS and 10GBE NAS from these brands. So. First and foremost, let's get straight into costs. There's no denying it, Thunderbolt NAS is gonna cost you more on the whole. Um, they've taken, you know, to get Thunderbolt and that Intel license, because Thunderbolt isn't just something they dash out easily. To get Thunderbolt NAS, they have had to pay through the nose, and QNAP are aware that they pretty much call to the market on Thunderbolt NAS. The result is that Thunderbolt NAS, like for like, always seems to cost more than 10 GBE NAS. Now, if you wanna know what the cheapest option for Thunderbolt NAS and 10GBE NAS from Synology that is still productive is, it's as follows. From QNAP, it is the QNAP TS453BT3. Don't worry about writing it down. In the description, there's a link to a whole article about this subject. It arrives, at, uh, give or take, around 900 pounds uh, from um, QNAP, and it's a four bay NAS. It's got HDMI on board. It's got USB 3 for expansion ports. It's got two Thunderbolt 3 ports there. So two devices can connect via Thunderbolt to the device and they can edit simultaneously as well as network and internet connectivity to distribute work and it even has 10GBE on board as well. It's got an Intel J series CPU and I'm not gonna bore you of all the specs, go to the link in the description, but effectively it's quad core Intel J3455 Celeron chip. Um, and the device itself, it, it's a good, good, nice, it's the lowest priced Thunderbolt 3 now from QNAP, but it's still close to a grand without the hard drive media or your local tax. The lowest, you know, workable Synology solution that uses 10GBE would be the Synology DS1517 Plus. And the upgrade of the new 10GBE card, the E10G18T1. That gives you one 10GBE uh, port of connectivity. You can access directly to that QNAP or run it into a switch that's 10GBE supported, and multiple devices can access the NAS over 10GBE as long as they've got 10GBE. But the prices between them aren't that comparable. The Synology with the card, so the 1517 and that 10GBE card, come at about 740 quid, which again is already 160 pounds, give or take, without the VAT, cheaper than the QNAP. But the QNAP has 10GBE on board, it's got the HDMI port and a better CPU. It arrives with the Celeron chip and not the Atom, the old 2012 Atom that that Synology arrives with. And again, this comparison does continue. The QNAP does cost more, but you get lots for that money. They don't cheapen on you. If you go to the other end of the spectrum and we look at expensive Thunderbolt NAS versus expensive Synology uh, 10GBE and both of them top of their field, the QNAP, the TVS 1282T3, a quad core i5 or an i7, three HDMI, four Thunderbolt 3 ports, two 10GBE ports, a spare PCIe slot, and all kinds of productivity, eight hard drive bays, four SSD bays, and two internal bays to do caching and fast acting storage that can all be raided as you need. The Synology 
the best you can get for this setup with 10 GB in desktop form is the DS3617XS with a PCIe slot and 12 bays of storage that you can sp spread over hard drives or SSDs as you see fit. And once you include that card as well, the prices are as follows. The QNAP arrives at £2,400 minimum uh, for that setup with a quad core i5 and everything we just described. And the Synology, remember with one 10 GBE port to not even two, whereas you've got four Thunderbolt ports there on the QNAP, the Synology will come in at um, 2,230. So yes, you're saving about 170 you know, quid, but you're getting so much more for that QNAP. And in terms of cost, as much as I want to tell you that 10 GBE versus Thunderbolt NAS, 10 GBE wins because of its price, because it's lower, that's true. I still think you get more for your money from the QNAP. But in terms of price, I will tell you that QNAP NAS and Thunderbolt NAS give you more than 10 GB NAS for your money. Next, let's talk about ease of setup. And this is going to be a short one because in short, on a software level, Thunderbolt NAS and 10 GB NAS are near enough identical in the way you're going to be utilizing access. Because Thunderbolt NAS, as great as it is to hear it, you might be thinking, well, 10 GB NAS seems really complex and networking and IPs and network drives and mapping drives. Oh, I don't like that. I'm going to go for a Thunderbolt now so I can just plug in a Thunderbolt cable. Sorry, I've got bad news for you. The Thunderbolt NAS variant, and I'm including the Promise version, I'm talking about the QSAN version, and of course the QNAP version, all use Thunderbolt over IP. What that means in real terms is once you connect a Thunderbolt cable to the back of the QNAP and into your Thunderbolt device, the QNAP NAS will have to set up a virtual switch. So the Thunderbolt port can be seen as an IP. I know that sounds complex. What that means is the same thing that you would need to do to set up 10 GBE networking with a mapped drive and all of that, you're still gonna have to do with a Thunderbolt NAS. It is not as plug and play as a Thunderbolt Drobo or any direct attached storage or DAS device. You have to connect the Thunderbolt port, create a network switch, then run the, uh, the NAS Finder tool, Synology um, Assistant from Synology, and QFinder Pro from QNAP. Run it, it will find the virtual switch and let you map the network drive and access it that way. In terms of ease and access, they are identical. There are no advantages in terms of the way in which you access uh, with Thunderbolt as you would with 10GB. They are identical, so don't think you're gonna go for the Thunderbolt option because it sounds easier, because it isn't. And also, 10GBE gives you the advantage of one, being able to um, utilize standard network protocol with a switch, but also it's less tricksy with this network, you know, virtual switch. If, if anything, 10 GBE connectivity is easier than that of Thunderbolt because of none of that network switch setup. So do bear that in mind. Next, support. Because um, QNAP and their Thunderbolt NAS is excellent. They've got loads of online tutorials. You've got a two year warranty. You've got loads of help and information. And QNAP have really got behind the Thunderbolt NAS bandwagon and supplied so much information and so many upgrades and different variants of access and architecture to really make it acceptable and usable to um, both hardware and software platforms in terms of software, Final Cut Pro, Adobe, all of those all can use Thunderbolt NAS as well as 10 GBE. In terms of support, this comes down to Synology versus QNAP because I do genuinely believe you get better support from Synology. The majority of their units, such as um, the, uh, the first unit we mentioned, the 1517, has a three year warranty that can be extended to five years. Or the 3617XS, the more expensive one we mentioned, has five years of warranty and a Synology replacement service where if you've got a fault, they will send a brand new unit out to you in 24 hours if you live within the right regions. QNAP, two years of warranty, a shorter warranty, and therefore it feels like a smaller amount of faith in their architecture and their devices. And therefore, in terms of support, my love goes behind 10GBE Synology, but more towards the Synology brand more than 10GBE connectivity, which leads me to the last point, performance. Now, 10GBE connectivity to a Synology NAS will net you somewhere as low as 330 megabits per second on a single drive, all the way up to 800 if you do things right with raiding the right SSDs, and maybe even closer to 1000. If you raid SSDs in a rate area environment, you can get speeds like that from 
a uh, Synology NAS over 10 GBE if you do it right with the right drives and the right RAID. The, and you can do that with the lowest version, that 730 quid one we mentioned earlier, that you can get that done with the Synology and the 10 GBE card and that Atom CPU. With QNAP, if you go for that 900 quid option, the one we went for, the TS453 BT3, the highest speed you're going to see over Thunderbolt is about 530 meg. And that's max. Even if you RAID zero a bunch of SSDs over Thunderbolt, that's all you're going to get. And in many respects, this may surprise you. Because that device has got a 10 GBE port, we've done speed tests and so have QNAP. And the 10 GBE port actually reported higher read and write speeds than the Thunderbolt port on that smaller, um, lower priced Thunderbolt NAV. Of course, if you go high, some of those two and three grand devices that have got Thunderbolt 3 and an i7 inside, then you will see 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 megabits per second with the right SSD RAID-based setup. And of course, enterprise hard drives too. But in terms of performance, definitely you get higher numbers from Thunderbolt now, don't get me wrong. But because of that Thunderbolt over IP protocol and the fact that you need a powerful CPU inside to give you those speeds because of, you know, IP protocol being more complex than standard, you know, direct attach access, you will have to spend more money to get higher speeds. Whereas in Synology and 10GBE, you can actually save a bit of money with a Synology NAS and 10GBE. You know, there's lots of ways to get those higher speeds and spend less, which is weird to say that about these two brands. When, till very recently, Synology was always the brand that cost you more, and QNAP was the one that gave you versatility. So it's fantastic to see that these two brands are meeting more in the middle. Now, if you run a Thunderbolt only setup and you want to use a 10 GB uh, setup uh, device, do remember that there are Thunderbolt to 10 GB adapters such as the Sonic 10G adapter and the Akitio Thunder 3 adapter. They both let you connect a Thunderbolt 3 port into an adapter and out the other end is 10 GB, 10 G base D to be precise. So that's going to cost you another 200 quid, give or take 250 if you buy it in certain places. The QNAP system here will not need any adapters because both of the QNAP solutions I've talked about today have got 10 GBE, indeed two ports on the bigger one, and have both got Thunderbolt 3. So you won't need those adapters and that's another saving there. And if you want to have as few adapters and muck around items in the middle as possible, the QNAP may well be the device for you. But that has been QNAP Thunderbolt now versus Synology 10 GBE NAS. I am not going to give you an out and out winner. I just can't because it very much depends on your budget, your setup, your needs and your skill set. I personally would opt probably for the, uh, the QNAP NAS because the QNAP Thunderbolt gives, I have a complex nature about me, tell me about it. And I know more about this hardware and the way things are connected that I would want or that extra HDMI and better CPUs and 10 GB and Thunderbolt options available to me on the QNAP. But that said, if you don't have that and you just want to set up and forget box, you don't want to take advantage of a lot more direct access or direct attack storage options and you want it purely on the network, purely easy, and still have the distribution and the fast acting speed of 10 GBE, Synology 10 GBE may be the one for you. All of the solutions I've talked about today, as well as the more wordy version of this video, all the descriptions of my pros and cons are in the link in the description. If you want to learn more about them, do go down there now. If you've enjoyed this video don't forget to click like and if you enjoyed this video even more why not subscribe for more information otherwise thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time